Okay, 2010 Mazda CX-7 uh, with the FNR5 five-speed trans. All right, I had overhauled this transmission maybe a month ago, and the lady came back yesterday. She said it's not shifting right. Uh, I drove the car, and it shifts up with no problem. One, two, three, and then when it hits fourth gear, it runs away, it neutralizes like there's nothing there. A T light starts flashing and I have a P0734 code, which is gear ratio error in fourth. All right, so now uh, pop the hood, pull the dipstick out, the fluid is cherry red, does not smell burnt. So I figured the uh, best place to start with this would be the valve body. I wanted to drop the valve body out and I wanted to double check make sure the band is working okay because pretty much the band is second and fourth I have a perfect one two shift but I have a bad three four shift I have no three four shift so the band comes on in second comes off in third comes back on in fourth but for some reason it was not coming back on it it, it was not coming back on in fourth the the solenoid and the shift valve I believe were moving because when it did make the shift, it just ran away and did nothing. So I dropped the valve body out, drained the pan, dropped the valve body out. I have it spread out here on the bench because I wanted to share with you guys what I found. Um, I did check the shift valves. I checked all the valves. Everything seemed okay. The two on-off solenoids seem okay. So the only thing I had left to do was to take a look at this plate. So what I did, I mean a lot of these feed holes are very, very small in here and I had it in the sink, you know, watching it to get the oil off it. So what I did was I just kind of started running my fingers across the plate to see if I could feel anything, and sure enough, I did. And I want to actually give you guys a close-up shot of this, but, you know, to put this transmission together, when you put the two halves together, the main case and the bell housing, you seal it with silicone. And even when you put the back cover on, um, that has that stator shaft that feeds the a couple of drums there, the reverse drum and the, and the high drum. That has silicone as well and the auxiliary valve body. Hold that pan on. So um, I'm rubbing, I'm going to see if I can actually show this to you because I didn't take it out yet. Uh, so I'm rubbing my uh, fingers across this thing and then I feel something. And then I start looking at it and there's actually, I mean this is a pinhole. I don't even know if you can get a pin in here. There's a piece of silicone stuck in the feed hole. So that is, uh, cause I was running around here, double checking everything. Uh, I mean, when I check the band and I use the rubber tip hose and I use very little air when I air check, I really didn't lose the pressure until I removed the rubber tip. So, you know, sometimes those cases have to be sleeved uh, but again, the one, two shift was not affected. So, you know, I wasn't sure what the heck was going on. Uh, but I did find it. So I had the valve body all apart here. I wanted to, I found this last night and of course this lady has no car now, but, uh, I, I thought this was, wow, look at this. And, uh, I wanted to show you guys. So I didn't put anything back together yet. So I'm going to do that now which reminds me of another story with a 4L30E. They have plastic washers in them, uh, selective plastic washers. And one I did on a BMW, probably about a 92, the washer was broken up. But I still had a piece because they are selective to get a thickness. And you know, you take this thing all apart, you clean it up as best you can. Uh, run, we have a parts washer we run through. So shortly after I did that, uh, that we picked it up for a different problem, not even the transmission. And as we drove the car back, because the lady lives a few miles away, 
and she was working, so we just dropped the car off and we drove her BMW back. Uh, the manager comes to me and says, hey, you know, this car's not shifting right, but it wasn't even here for that. So unless it happened as we were driving it, I'm not sure. So while it was here, you know, we addressed that. And uh, again, it was a little confusing. So I dropped the valve body out of that too. You know, all the solenoids are new. And uh, air check what I could air check. Everything looked good. Took the front half down, the little auxiliary valve body. Um, made sure the gaskets were good and the holes were blocked. And then I did the same thing. I just said, I'm not really sure, so I just kind of started doing this. I don't know what made me do it, but I did. That's why I did it on this one. And there was a piece of plastic from uh, one of the washers stuck in the feed hole. So this this is like the second time or third time I'm seeing this. But I, I did want to share it with you guys, so um, let me give you a let me see if I can get up close here and maybe put a flashlight on it. I'm um, hoping I can show this to you. So, and then I got to put this back together and then I want to hang it. And then when the guys get in, they can put the uh, pan up, put the fluid back in and we can get this back to uh, the customer. Very nice lady though. Um, I mean, it happens. I don't like when it happens, especially a month after it's done. Uh, but she was very understanding, very, very nice lady. So let me get a little closer here. Let me figure out how I can uh, show you. I mean, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, all right, so I will be right back, and I'm going to get a close-up shot onto that separator plate. Okay, here is the piece right here. If you can see that piece of silicone sticking right through a... Uh, uh, tiny pinhole that you probably can't even get a pin in. So there's my problem. So I'm going to clean all that out. I got to put this valve body back together and put it back in the car. So again, I was going a little crazy here trying to figure this out. Um, and you know, the thing is, is that the way it was commanding the shift, which is fine. You know, the computer is going to command the shift, but you know, it would make the shift and nothing would be there because the oil wasn't wasn't getting uh, to the band. But the weird thing is, is that I got a little confused there for a few minutes because it was, you know, the solenoid was turning on or turning off. I don't know the sequence. And it seemed like the shift valve was moving because it was making the shift, but just the band was not there. So I'm going to get this thing back together. It's very, very busy here. I got this valve body on the bench among the 4T40E, the 545 RFE. I got it standing on the other bench, and I got another FNR5 and a 5R110 and a Nissan unit to do. So I got to get going here with this. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. I thought it was, um, you know, interesting. And uh, um, at last resort, I picked up the plate and just uh, started rubbing my fingers around it and felt that piece of silicone. You know, of course you, can, you, you can't really see it, but I certainly felt it. And that's what, um, uh, how I found the problem. All right, so I guess that is about it on this 2010 Mazda CX-7. Um, again, overhauled this about a month ago, and she came back yesterday and claimed it was not shifting right. Gave me a P0734 gear ratio error in fourth. All right, so we found a piece of silicone stuck in the feed hole. All right, so I'm going to uh, get this back together, get it back in the car, get it back to the customer. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we will see you next one.